Welcome to That's Good Broncos. I am Brandon Perna, and today Annabelle Bolin, Denver Broncos owner, Pat Bolin's wife, announced that she too, like Pat Bolin, has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, she put out a statement today along with the five Bolin children and Broncos CEO and President Joe Ellis. Uh, part of her statement reads, since Pat's diagnosis, I have gained a vivid understanding of this disease's progression and its effect on those living with it as well as their families. My family and I have been and will remain dedicated supporters of Alzheimer's awareness, treatment, and research funding. She continued, I feel that it is important for people to know that those in my situation do not need to completely withdraw from their daily activities. Based on my own experience with Pat, there will still be many joyous and rewarding moments for me as well as my family and friends. Uh, end quote. Uh, and that is true. Alzheimer's, depending on the case, can progress very slowly. Uh, my great-grandma died from it, my grandpa died from it, and my grandma currently has dementia. I'm sure many of you watching are in similar situations with parents or grandparents, and understand that it starts with moments of lost cognition or awareness and slowly evolves to a point where there are only moments of clarity and awareness uh, that you see in your loved ones. Personally, I commend Annabelle's bravery and positivity in her statement and her willingness to live through this disease. One of my biggest fears, and when I say biggest, it's just one of those things that sort of pops in my head every now and again, or when I visit my grandma at her nursing home, which isn't enough, by the way, is if I ever get this disease, I do not want to live through it. Not necessarily for my sake, but for my family's sake. Not being able to care for myself is a thought I don't even want to let enter into my consciousness. Now forgive me, this episode is not about football, uh, if you haven't already guessed. June is Alzheimer's Awareness Month, and this disease is personal to me, and when I read about this today, I wanted to talk about it. Not because I believe I'll make a big difference, but because this channel is basically like therapy for me sometimes, and hopefully anyone who has family battling this disease can relate and realize many other people are going through it as well. Uh, a week and a half ago, my sister gave birth to her first child. Yesterday, my best friend's wife gave birth to their first child. This last weekend, as a family, we visited my grandma with dementia for her birthday, and she was able to see her great-grandson -grand for the first time. Now, my grandma can't walk. She can sort of still have conversations on a good day and typically still recognizes our faces when we see her. But when my sister put her week-old son in my grandmother's hands, I saw nothing but pure love emanate from my grandma. Her face lit up, and the first thing she said to her new grandson was, and I'm, I'm not gonna do my grandma's voice, but she said, oh, you're so special. We love you. Oh, we love you. It was a perfectly beautiful moment. It made me so happy that my grandma was still here to experience this moment with the family, especially because my sister has been the leader in helping take care of both of our grandparents as they dealt with Alzheimer's and dementia. Like I said, moments are all you get in the late stages of this disease, and you have to cherish them and hope to be around your loved ones when they happen. My grandma won't remember that she has a grandson, but when she gets to see him again, she will be happy and loving. And it rings true to what Annabelle said, that there, were, there will still be many joyous and rewarding moments for her and her family and friends. And that is true. What is hard, what is really hard is witnessing the diminishment of someone's cognition over time and seeing that person you knew transform into a shell of who they once were. I lived with my grandparents when I saw the first signs start to affect my grandpa. It was little things like waking up at 3 a.m. thinking it was time to start the day and forgetting how to do things he'd done thousands of times before. I was with him and my grandma at the doctor's office when they officially diagnosed him, and even though we knew what they were going to say, seeing him struggle to write his name on paper broke my heart. He knew something was wrong, but he couldn't define or articulate it. I vividly remember in the doctor's office when they asked him to write a complete sentence, and he said, all I know is I took care of my family and now they're taking care of me. 
And he was right. It's really the only choice you're left with in those situations. I moved out while my grandma was still able to care for him and when things were mostly manageable. My sister lived with them when it became clear that my grandma needed help and she stayed there uh, to the point where it was no longer safe for my grandpa to be at home even with my sister there. And years after that, my cousin lived with my grandma and helped care for her uh, as her health started to decline. My family is lucky. My grandparents have two things that make them lucky in this situation. One, children and grandchildren who care about them and live close enough to them uh, that care and support can be provided. I can't explain how proud I am of my parents and sister for everything they have done in these situations. And uh, we've been through it twice now. Over the last 11 years, this has been something that we've had to address, and my sister is so knowledgeable about care facilities, insurance, and Medicaid, and all this shit that makes these situations a nightmare to deal with. There's so many questions she knows to ask or things to evaluate about assisted living and nursing homes that I wouldn't have even thought about. Without her, my grandparents would not have received as good of care as they did or as my grandma is currently receiving. The other thing my grandparents had was retirement savings and a pension. When you get to the point where you can no longer be a caretaker for a loved one, the good options are really fucking expensive. And if you don't have the money to place your loved one in a good care facility, your options get worse and worse. And this is an issue until uh, they find real treatments to prevent this disease that will only get worse over time. The Bolins, fortunately, do not have to worry about money, but that is not the case for nearly everyone else that this affects. That's why when Annabelle Bolin said her family will remain dedicated supporters of Alzheimer's awareness, treatment, and research funding, I believe that is incredibly important. So if you are interested, uh, I'm providing a link in the description of this video to an article about seven different Alzheimer's disease charities that are actually using the majority of their money for research and care. If you feel like donating, please check it out. Uh, always do research before you donate to make sure your money is uh, being used appropriately. Uh, and I hope that one day this is a treatable issue, not just because of my personal fears, but for anyone it might affect, which includes those who get or have it and their family members who witnessed the disease. I really feel for the Bullen kids because I know how much this sucks. Uh, this might also have something to do with Beth Bullen's attempt to become the team's owner a month ago. Who knows? Uh, but right now, I wanted to make ways that you can contribute to uh, the, the charities available to you and to really uh, show my gratitude for my family and uh, everything they've done through these situations. Now, who knows if any of them will actually watch this episode, but uh, I, I put it out there. And you can come back tomorrow for your regularly scheduled dick jokes and football stuff. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports here on YouTube. Again, the link is in the description if you want to check out any of the Alzheimer's charities.